What's going on people? My name is Batman, and obviously I've been pretty hard on Destiny lately. But I wanted to reiterate two things. The first is that my bias against Destiny is born out of the intense bias I had in its favor before it launched. I'll link a video in the description that I made over a year before this game came out, before Call of Duty Ghosts had even come out, that spent 17 minutes arguing uh, that Destiny is the future of gaming. And I know I've already brought that video up a few times since launch. It's important to me that you understand I'm not someone who wanted to dislike this game. I'm not someone who wanted to see this game fail. I had very high hopes for Destiny. And I know there are a lot of you in the same boat who were really pumped up about this game and then felt extra disappointed when it didn't live up to the hype. Because it almost makes you feel kind of silly for the love you gave it before it released. Like a girlfriend who steals your wallet and runs off in the night. Now was some of that hype born out of unrealistic expectations? Maybe, but most of it was the result of a very powerful marketing campaign that in the end turned out not to be entirely accurate. Which is one of the points I try to make in that DLC video. But that DLC video also had a purpose. It's not just bitching and whining for the sake of throwing a temper tantrum. My bitching is goal oriented. The goal is to make some noise because this game does have a 10 year plan. The contract is signed, we know this, and it's not going to be just this one disc with a bunch of DLC released for the next 9 years. I don't know how people got that impression. The original contract we've seen states that there will be 4 games in total. I've heard that the number might be reduced to 3. There's no rational reason, however, to think that it's just going to be DLC from here on out. I don't know why people think that. I suspect it will be a biannual release every 2 years, maybe every 3 years at the most, and the future of this game can be epic. Presumably the next Destiny uh, will launch on next gen only as we'll be far enough along in the console transition by then. That provides a lot of opportunity to fix much of what was deficient in this most recent release and really deliver on what a lot of people were expecting in this first release. And what I always say is that the second game in a series is always one of the best, if not the best. Halo 2, Modern Warfare 2, Bad Company 2, Black Ops 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Because in the second entry, they have a chance to see what they did right and what they did wrong in the first entry. The sequel is always a perfection of the original formula, but if we want to secure a super duper future for Destiny, we have to be very vocal as a community about the things we don't like in the first one. More than vocal. I obviously advocated trying to hit them in the wallets because that's where their ears are. But it's not going to be just one video or one channel. I put in my two cents, but ultimately it's going to come down to the entire community collectively putting in their two cents. And that should get the job done. But this video is about the future. Activision is a dog. And when the dog shits in the house, you rub its nose in it, and you slap it on the nose. But then you also have to put it outside to show where the right place is to shit. That's what this video is about. This video is about what can be done in Destiny 2 if Destiny 2 is going to make up for the shortcomings of the first Destiny. There are things they could do to win me back, to win everyone back, to boldly go where no FPS RPG kinda MMO has ever gone before, to bring forth a game that can entrance the casual gamer but still satisfy the more serious gaming enthusiast. Now the first big thing they could implement they put this in the game, I don't care what else they do or how they do it, I'll play the game and I'll have fun on it, is an open world PvP area where all loot drops upon player death. In a world far away from the scrutiny of society and the searing gaze of the traveler, with cold hard calculation and determination, guardians risk all against one another in hopes of becoming even more powerful. In a winner takes all no man's land, known only as graveyard PvP. Now, you'll recognize this system from DayZ, however, whereas DayZ is more survival driven and open ended in the goals you can come up with, Destiny's graveyard PvP mode would be loot driven, and there would be a variety of different goals to go about amongst the threat of other guardians seeking to destroy you and pillage your corpse. It would actually be more similar to the wild from RuneScape. For those of you who can recall such a thing, it was a PvP area. When you died, you dropped whatever you had on you. But what was cool about it was that there were other goals to be pursued in the wild. Hunting dragons for their drops, fighting raid bosses such as the King Black Dragon or this other bug thing that I can't remember the name of, a high level mini game that to access you had to pull a teleporter lever deep in the most dangerous parts of the wild, there were quests to be completed out there, there were resources to be obtained like rune ore, very rare resources. There were special rune crafting routes that merchants would run under the threat of aggressive PKers hunting their runes and special teleportation medallions. There were all these adventures that could unfold out there, there was so much more to do than just fight other players, and the tasks outside of hunting other players were extra rewarding because there was so much more risk involved. The rules of this graveyard PvP area in Destiny would be thus. Three man fire teams are allowed, they may revive one another, however if one player stays dead for 30 seconds he drops his loot and is returned to orbit. If all three members of the fire team are taken out, they all drop their items and return to orbit. 
And the area itself is as big as the open worlds are now. Imagine the entire surface of the moon was just one big PvP area. Now the actual world they used would have to be modified somewhat from the current open world so that it's not so wide open that it just turns into one big sniper fest. Uh, the city area in the Ishtar Sink of Venus, I think, would provide a healthy PvP balance. Now it would be high risk, high reward. The better the gear you take into graveyard PvP would mean the more likely you are to kill other players, right, and get their shit. But if you get killed, you would of course lose that powerful gear you brought in. What I imagine most players would do is use the best armor they have that they don't necessarily want. For instance, full sets of rare, uh, or maybe even a couple legendaries if they really don't care for them. For instance, I might take a legendary scout rifle that I never use. So they enter this super dangerous graveyard PvP world, and they have some options for what tasks they can pursue. They can farm chests, but instead of each chest giving out a minimum of two resources, it gives out a minimum of six resources, and with a chance to roll for a legendary out of one of the chests. Or they can do patrol missions, but because these patrols are extra dangerous, you get double the amount of reputation. Perhaps there are bounties to be pursued out there, but you get double vanguard marks and reputation for completing them. There are high level bad guys you can fight that have a high chance of high level drops. There could even be like a fucking high level strike to complete out there, but you have to do it while maintaining a defensive perimeter against potential player killers. Or of course, you could just be a player killer, hunting other guardians out there in the graveyard, murdering agents of the light for their material possessions. Now the catch is, once you've gathered up a hefty inventory, whether it's of a certain upgrade resource or the armor and weapons of your victims, you have to request extraction, call in evac, beam me up Scotty, except it's your ghost beaming you up or whatever. Now, the more gear you have on you, and the rarer or higher quality that gear is, but not counting any of the gear you came in with, the longer it takes for this extraction to take place. And when that extraction begins, all the players in the world are notified of it, the same way they would be notified of a public event. You get to choose where the extraction takes place, you obviously want to make this choice strategically and find a highly defensible area or a far away area or whatever. You get to choose when the extraction takes place, Maybe you extract as another team's extracting, so that all the potential player killers are distracted. But say your fire team has acquired like a full set of legendary, then maybe the extraction time is like three minutes and everybody comes for you and you have to hold for those three minutes. Now what you have working in your favor is that those fire teams coming for you will still be able to fight one another so they can fit like five fire teams in one world, four fire teams get the extract notification and converge on your position. It's inevitable that they'll run into each other and that's dangerous for everyone. Some people might actually stay the fuck clear of that area because they don't want to get involved, maybe other people take advantage of the distraction and begin their own extraction like I was talking about, who knows? The lore to explain this would be something like, the more stuff you have, the longer it takes for your ghost to digitize you or break you down into atoms and transport you. The rarer the items, the more complex their atomic structure or something, and thus the longer it takes to break those down into whatever the ghost breaks you down into when it, you know, teleports you places and revives your dead body and all that. This area would generate so many unique player experiences that they can tell their friends about later at work and school. That's what makes the game great, in my opinion. Oh, and all level and gear advantages are turned on just like how the Iron Banner was supposed to be before they nerfed it. That's what people have to take into account when deciding what gear they want to bring, what stuff they want to risk. And graveyard mode is only unlocked at level 20 or whatever the soft cap is in the next Destiny game. Now outside of open world PvP, Destiny's regular open world needs some serious work as well. Currently it's a pretty and immersive place to be, but it's not a very fun place to be because there isn't a lot to do. What they need to do is add some danger and some fear. Not the kind of danger and fear you'd feel in a PvP open world, these can just be regular PvE worlds. But when someone dies, instead of respawning right where they died, they should be teleported all the way back to the original location you spawn at when you first enter the world. And in conjunction with this, the enemies in the open world should scale up slightly with your level so they actually pose a threat. Not the same kind of threat you would face in a strike or story mission, but enough so that death is a realistic danger to be concerned about. Currently, most of the time when you're doing something in this open world, whether it's a bounty or a patrol mission or whatever, you walk right through all the bad guys' groups. They aren't power enough to kill you, and if they do kill you, you can respawn right where you die. There's also no tangible benefit to fighting or killing them, so there's very little incentive to do anything but ignore them and go on your way. If they put your respawn all the way back at the first spawn on, on the map, and you actually had to like, you know, travel a distance to get back to where you were, you wouldn't be as lax a day's clue about getting shot at. You would take cover when your shields were down, you would want to kill the guys shooting at you. It would be a little bit of fear. Just a little. But that fear is what makes games fun. If there's no threat of failure, what's the point of success? 
Now, they also need to increase player interaction possibilities. What would be neat if every time you did go down, you could hold X to instantly respawn at the original world spawn, or you could wait 30 seconds because every other guardian in the open world would get a notification of you dying, and a nav marker would appear where you died like a public event, and guardians could come revive you for some kind of neat minor reward. Or if you do have to respawn, a bounty gets placed on the bad guy that killed you for all other guardians in the world to see and hunt his ass down for a minor reward. And if a guardian kills a certain amount of enemies in the open world without dying or leaving said world, the enemy should put a bounty on that guardian. So if you've been farming one spawn or something and you've killed like 200 dregs, suddenly drop ships start falling out of the fucking sky to attack you and it becomes this like public event for the whole open world, and that event doesn't end until said player does finally get killed, but the enemies hunting him keep getting stronger and stronger as time goes on, kind of like wave defense, until finally he does get killed, in which case all players will receive a reward that is relative in terms of its quality depending on how long they held out. And of course said player who had the bounty on him can just get revived and start over. It could generate entirely unique wave defense mini games sort of at random places in the open world. It would be a dynamic experience, you know, and all the guardians in the open world come, you know, get on their sparrows and rush to your position to fortify your defenses and help you out. It'd be cool. It'd be a good way to make some new friends. Now, the patrol missions themselves need to be way more epic. I think each patrol mission should be equal in scope and intensity to that of how public events are now. So you activate a patrol mission and it's like stop these fallen sappers from digging under the city's wall and you go and do that and it's all intense like a public event and other players can get in or maybe like go to this computer and download this shit and it's a little mini wave defense type thing uh, like that one public event where you have to link the war sat or whatever it is. And then the public events should be upgraded to be fucking brutal and massive every time, not just restricted to one area of the open world, but encompassing the entire open world, all right? And people don't have the option to join when it starts. If they're in the world, they're in the fucking event. A massive cabal armada is invading Earth, and all these cabal dropships just start dropping out of the sky and attacking certain power points on the map, and guardians have to rush to defend each power point, and there's chaos and different objectives are popping up, like, oh, now they're trying to plant a bomb over here that will blow up the entire planet, OMG, or the cabal have a field hospital set up over here for their wounded massacre them all and extra XP rewards for the doctor's heads. They need to bring in player trading. They could keep the loot system the way it is, all random and such, and put in player trading and it would work perfectly. There needs to be proximity chat in the open world so I can say thanks when someone revives me. They should also bring in a sort of quick chat option, sort of like in Battlefield, how if you hold down left bumper, a little menu will pop up that says things like need repairs, need medic, need ammo, or get out or get in. They should have the same thing in Destiny, but with things like, I don't know, need raid partners or need to tank or need DPS, something along those lines. Then the devs could ensure it was safe and useful chat without any flaming to hurt the coveted audience of little children they are catering to. Every planet should have its own tower third person player hub type thing. Each of these player hubs should have its own sparrow racing track. People should be able to bet on the sparrow races. There needs to be cantinas with music jukeboxes that players can control and card tables for card games including poker and go fish and even uno. Chess games and checkers and foursquare fucking pong and you can bet on it all. There needs to be slot machines. There needs to be soccer games that people can spectate. Everyone needs to have an apartment to serve as a sort of player owned house. They can choose which planet to have it on and they start out at the bottom of the apartment complex in the fucking cellar with condensation dripping from the heat pipes and as they acquire resources and level up they can acquire better and better apartment rooms in the complex, eventually reaching the top with an epic view of the entire city and fireworks going off in the distance and ships flying by as the moon and the traveler shine pink in the night and change with the seasons, night and day, rain and sun, snow and hail, fall, winter, spring and summer on each planet and each season is its own unique experience on each planet, not only in the cities but in every part of the playable galaxy. And the apartments are fully customizable. You can choose from a variety of different layouts and you can choose where the furniture goes and what kind of furniture it is. After you kill a thousand of a certain type of enemy, you can mount their head above your fireplace. TVs that you can watch YouTube videos on with your friends in your apartment. That you can watch soccer games and sparrow races and card games on. Ancient films from the 21st century can be collected throughout the galaxy. And you play the rarest ones in your apartment to show off to your friends. And other cutscenes and movies are collectible too. A radio that you can scour the galaxy collecting music for. Exotic pieces of furniture 
furniture that are expensive and rare and hard to get. You can set up suits of armor in the hallway, a full set of exotic, finally something to do with all that redundant exotic armor you aren't allowed to wear because it won't get you level 30 because it's not raid gear. And you already have one exotic equipped anyways. Paintings and everything possible in The Sims, possible in this apartment, but only through its attainment and its attainment is varied and for the rare stuff difficult. Exponentially maximizing on the potential of endgame content. There needs to be a wave defense option available at each city on each planet, outside on the perimeter of the city tower-like area that is on each planet against the forces constantly attacking the city. Infinite waves, but the farther you get, the better the loot. Melee weapons need to be available as primary weapons, powerful light-infused swords and axes and hammers and whips. There needs to be spaceship gameplay, explorable asteroid fields, mine the asteroids for resources and mount an attack on an enemy space station, PvP spaceship playlists with huge flagships that you can fly in and out of, sabotage them like in Star Wars Battlefront 2, and in every single one of those loading screens where your ships are flying through the blue space-time void thing, make it a mini-game, alright? Objects and enemy ships flying at you, straight at you, that you have to dodge or destroy is a sort of circular scroll shooter, a maiden whose quest you complete and then you can date her and fuck her, and a boy version of the maiden for all the ladies too. Blood rituals and cockfights and booze and drugs, lots and lots of drugs. And only then can Destiny truly become legend. Please remember to rate the video. This is Batman. Oh, one more thing. I accept clips from subscribers if you want a clip in this montage, or not this montage, in a montage video on this channel. Send in a clip, dukedobbins at gmail.com. Send in some cool clips you got of Advanced Warfare or Destiny, any game you want. If it's some random game, maybe I'll try and fit it in here and there. Um, but mainly, you know, the primary games I upload, Destiny and Advanced Warfare uh, and Halo and all that. And then I can use them and I'm going to try and keep the ratio of my clips and subscriber clips at about 50-50, you know, because I want to make sure that I'm not giving the impression that I'm relying on other people's clips, you know, but more like I'm using other people's clips because other people get really cool clips that are, you know, it adds diversity to the video. I have a similar play style throughout the game. My play style doesn't change a lot. Other people use different types of weapons and all that jazz. It diversifies the video it's a cool thing to do so you know get all up on that and keep it real may the force be with you in the hood this is batman signing out